Good evening. I got the wrong. And uh, we we'll start with the, the Indian tradition of lighting of the lamp. And for that, uh, I request uh, uh, Mr. U.P. Singh, Secretary from Ministry of Water Resources, Human Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. Our Secretary General, Mr. Pandya. Our Vice President, Dr. Ella Reddy. Our international partner, Ardu, uh, uh, Dr. Ramon. Uh, I request to come and light the lamp. <laughs> Welcome 
all of them to this event. We are happy to welcome our direct members, current and former office bearers, to this event. In the end, I once again welcome one and all for this event. With this, we start our uh, program. I request uh, Dr. Felix Renders, our president, to uh, uh, to give the message from uh, South Africa to our uh, guest who are present here. Dr. Felix Renders. Thank you very much, uh, Harish. Uh, good evening uh, to everyone here in Italy. It's a uh, gracious moment in the history of ICIT. And uh, your excellencies and distinguished guests, uh, together with uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on this 24th of June 2018, the International Commission on the will step into the ninth year of foundation. Actually, uh, it is really proud and honored to be part of an organization that has the best year through the testing trials of the world and has the best feeling. Dr. Felix? Yes. Dr. I think uh, there is a problem in the voice. Your voice is not clear, so we can play your recorded message. Okay, we can do that. Uh, so you can so hear me, that's it. Yeah, okay, we will play your recorded message. Okay, that, that, that would be correct. Now I'll go to the Will you uh, put it on the screen? On the 24th of June 2018, the National Commission on Education and Marriage stepped into the 69th year. Our foundation and I, Felix Rennes, as president, feel proud and honored to be part of an organization that has successfully steered through the testing types of agricultural water management and has sustainably created value for all its stakeholders. It is a matter of great pride for the ICID fraternity straight across the globe to observe the ICID Foundation Bank. The International Commission on Education and Language established on the 24th of June 1950 is a leading scientific, technical, international, non profit, non governmental organization. ICID is a professional network of experts from across the world in the field of education, drainage, and flood management. The main mission is to promote sustainable agricultural water management to achieve a modern, secure world free of poverty and hunger through sustainable rural development. ICID is a knowledge sharing platform dedicated to issues that covers the entire spectrum of agricultural water management practices, ranging from rain fed agriculture to supplemental irrigation, land drainage, deficit irrigation, to food irrigation. In addition, drainage of agricultural lands form the whole theme of commission's activities. Flooded drought, the two extreme are increasingly available climate as a result 
of climate change also form the focus of our activities. For the more than 75 countries that represent more than 90% of irrigation agriculture, it gives us the opportunity to dedicate ourselves to our mission. We are extremely fortunate that we will together witness a unique announcement and a great moment of pride in the mission's history. Our journey has been a long day, and this incredible journey of ours is a testament of the vision, entrepreneurship spirit, and commitment of our founders and leaders. Let's take this moment to pay homage to our founders and acknowledge those noteworthy accomplishments that created an institution which prides on its diversity. I'm optimistic about ICID's future. As the need for food and fiber are growing faster, we must stay prepared to proactively seize the opportunities. It is time for us to collaborate and leverage our strength to be amongst the leaders. Let's move ahead with utmost zeal and excitement and pledge our commitment to not only our customers, but all stakeholders who will be a part of our journey in the future years. <laughs> ICID succeeds not because it is big, or because it has been long established. <laughs> People hoping, learning, sleeping, dreaming, believing, and build great future plans forward. Let us celebrate the 69th Foundation Day with best wishes to every one of you the Management Board of ICID, all the national committees, and the ICID staff on this momentous occasion. Dear fellow students, Lord President, thank you very much for delivering your uh, message. Thank you. Now I request Mr. A.P. Padia, Secretary General of ICID, to give glimpses of ICID activities through this presentation, Know Your ICID. <laughs> Honorable uh, guests, Secretary of Water Resources, Government of India, our Vice President, Dr. Yala Reddy, senior officers and representatives from the embassies across the world. We are indeed very happy and very honored to have you all here on our Foundation Day and share our vision and our activities. ICIT, as has already been told, was established with a hoary past, wherein the highest echelons of a newly independent country took personal interest in establishing an institution which will revolutionize the world by removing hunger and poverty. And India did succeed in, in that activity. We are a network of professionals which are spread across more than 70 countries. And we have facilitated sharing of experiences and transfer of water management technology for over 60 years. We have dedicated and to enhance the world, worldwide supply of food and fiber to all people. And we encourage public and private partnership in development and management of water resources. Our vision has been a holistic vision. 
we have started out in 1951 and we started covering the engineering aspects, expanded our area to social and economic aspects. Now we are also looking at the sustainable agriculture and capacity building and water security and sustainable rural development. These areas are all forming the foundation of water security and water management across the world. And this is, these are becoming more and more important because of the changing demographics, development scenario, and finite natural resources and ecological sustainability. As we can see, the UN has charted out for us sustainable development goals. And many of the goals, especially low poverty, zero hunger, good health, clean water and sanitation, clean energy, climate action, life below water, they are all pertaining to water. The water underlies all of these goals. And goal 70, which says that to strengthen the best means of implementation and revitalize the goal, global partnership for sustainable development. A sustainable development can come only with the harnessing of our resources, which are renewable. And water is one of the most renewable and most regularly renewable resource that we have. Unless we focus on these resources, the sustainable development goals will remain in. Our vision is what to secure world free of poverty and hunger achieved through sustainable rural development. And our vision that we have adopted is to work together towards sustainable agriculture water management to interdisciplinary approaches to economically viable, socially acceptable, and environmentally sound. We adopted a vision in our Mexico Congress in 2017 in which we set for ourselves a vision to achieve a water secure world by 2030. And when we set ourselves six goals to enable higher crop productivity, to be a catalyst for change, facilitate exchange of information, enable cross-disciplinary and intersectoral engagement, encourage research and support, and facilitate capacity development. These are the goals which we feel that we'll be able to take the entire world to a ideal situation where it will be free of poverty and We are covering 95% of the global irrigated area. But this is not all. Because uh, apart from the global irrigated area, there are large swathes of this world which are suffering from recurrent droughts, which are suffering from extreme water security issues and we need to incorporate them and bring them in our fold in order to see that we are able to achieve our mission. We currently have about 80 members and 84 members and we would like to have more members in our fold so that we are able to reach where the development is most needed. We operate through national committees. Primarily, we look at the national committees as our representatives, as our agents, as our agents for change in their respective countries and their respective regions. We also have regional groupings where multiple countries in the same region can come together and work well upon various issues of water security and water management and agriculture water management that is required. In the, in, the, in the national committee, we try to have representations from all across the spectrum of workers and professionals, starting from the government, where the Department of Education or Ministry of Water Resources or various other names that are that are known, and then we go all the way up to all the workers and the research institutes and young professionals. This is our structure. We have an international governing executive council which is formed by the vice presidents and the president and the secretary general. And we have our central office here at Delhi. And we have associations, live associations with international organizations like World Water Council, International Commission on Large Dams, UN organizations like UN Water, and various other international organizations like IWM, <coughs> etc. We work through the technical working groups and task forces. This is our current composition where we have the vice presidents coming from from the Netherlands, UK, Morocco, Russia, Pakistan, Nepal, 
We provide meeting grounds for research and operation professionals through technical working groups. The technical working groups are the core of the ICID activities. In each technical working group, a mandate is taken, and for that mandate, all the members of the working group, which are spread across various countries, come together, discuss their issues, bring the status of the knowledge within their country to the fore, collect all the knowledge, consolidate it, and provide a a very lasting document in which all this information is collected and we then we try to propagate those practices across the other countries where such issues are concerned and government. A very important thing is the dissemination and knowledge share. We have our flagship events, one event, Congress, that is the Triennial, it happens every three years. We have had 23 congresses so far. Last one was in 2017 in Mexico City, where Honorable President of Mexico also graced the occasion and he participated in the conference in the plenary session and very actively made very useful suggestions. We in the congresses have examined 61 topics in form of questions, and each question is generally subdivided into three topics. And we get papers all across the world which reflect the status of the knowledge on that particular topic at that particular point of time. In addition, we have the World Irrigation Forums, which are also held in the alternate years of the Congress. And we have had two held so far. And we have already examined their two themes and six sub themes. Last one was held in Chiang Mai, Thailand. The International drainage workshop provide the other aspect of the agriculture water management, that is the drainage. Drainage is occurring because of the floods as well as requirement of the agricultural operations wherein the excess water has to be drained out in order to maintain the productivity of the land. And we have had 13 international drainage workshops held so far where we have examined various issues regarding the drainage and flood management. We have had eight micro-irrigation conferences because it has been realized quite earlier that the micro-irrigation is one of the most important topics in the agriculture water management in order to see that we are able to economize our water because in case of agriculture, we are consuming nearly 80% of the world's available water, any water on agriculture. And other sectors are also having equal kind of demands. And unless we have an intersectoral transfer of water, we will not be able to yield sustain. So for that matter, micro irrigation conferences are something that provides a very important aid when we need to examine. And the next conference for the micro irrigation is going to be held in January 2019 at Aurangabad in India. Our Indian National Committee, that is the International Committee of Service Water, is, is actively from planning and proposing this workshop. We also carry out, we also organize regional conferences because each region in the world has its own problems which are best understood by the countries within the region and those problems also need very detailed examination. So from that angle we have been examining the regional issues for Asia we have had eight conferences, Europe we have had 26 conferences America, we have got five conferences, and Africa, four conferences. The next, the very latest conference, Asian Regional Conference, took place in Kathmandu in this May, wherein the President of Nepal also participated in the conference and gave us some valuable, valuable advice. Most important thing in case of the technological field is to bring up new generation of irrigation and drainage professionals. The technologies are moving very fast. The new skills are being developed every, every moment. And unless the young professionals are able to revive those skills and bring them through their practice, it will not be possible for the field to keep on growing. So for that purpose, we have a vibrant young professionals training program. In each event of ICID, we sponsor 10 young professionals from across the world. 
we pay for their entire expenses for joining the corporate congress or the conferences and we also hold a special one or two days training program wherein the international faculty is able to expose them to the latest topics and latest issues that are coming up in the area of irrigation and drainage and they also participate in the various other sessions as well we also have stand alone training programs when the professionals are exposed to specialized topics for example the last training program that we held in china in april 2018 exposed them to the <coughs> extension and rehabilitation measures required and how to assess the need for extension and rehabilitation measures in a irrigation project similarly in kathmandu we exposed our young professionals to the new tools that are getting developed for basin water management to csiro in the form of basin futures and various other issues that are that are there in addition to that we have a young professional e forum where it is possible to allow interactions amongst the young professionals themselves they have their own coordinators and they carry out their own interactions and try to develop and try to bring in new ideas into the sector we also have a linkedin forum where the young professionals membership of about 300 individuals are there we mentor them we watch their performances and we select out of them who can go to the sponsor conferences and various other events of icia we also have a vibrant area of e discussions and webinars wherein the experienced professionals coupled with the young professionals participate and provide the latest topics and latest information in these areas these webinars are largely free we do not have any restriction most of the times we encourage anybody to become a part of the webinar and and, and present their idea or listen to the other ideas many of the countries even present this webinars over a larger gathering by putting it in a conference hall and in the process expose much larger number of people than otherwise was any <laughs> what the area of irrigation we would we are also promoting the heritage irrigation structures the heritage irrigation structures present a very important category of structures so these structures demonstrate the ideas and demonstrate the concepts which have lasted over hundreds of years we recognize the heritage irrigation structure which is functioning for last 100 years or more in fact now we are having few structures which have been functioning from something like 200 220 years bc and they are still providing the similar kind of benefits with the original planners and receivers so we have had, we have a roster of heritage irrigation structures where we recognize them we provide them a plaque and we also promote the ideas that these structures actually represent across the world we have what's the annual awards very we recognize the individuals and institutes who have worked for developing the water saving technologies and the water saving methods and they have put them in practice and demonstrated actually on the field that these have been really worked we have various categories like what is the technology award where the technological innovations are recognized we have the water management award where the management interventions are recognized young professionals who have done exceptional work and then what is the farmer award the farmers who have come to on to the yeah. club Yes, so the culture. We have recently started in collaboration with the World Water Council. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 in the eighth world water forum 2018 in brazil and we'll continue this program so that we are able to see that how the water has been managed over the years we also have a world irrigation and drainage prize in which we award and recognize 
a leading professional who has made an impression on the irrigation and drainage thing and agriculture water management. We are continually assimilating and generating knowledge in irrigation and drainage and we have a research program for the international program for technology and research in irrigation and drainage. We have a very vibrant flow in Iran. We have other flow that is going to come up very shortly in Africa. It will Egypt. Uh, we are also having a plan for having a road in, uh, in Mediterranean countries. We also collaborate with the International Network for Participatory Irrigation Management. And then we have also looked at the benchmarking of the systems, maintaining database for irrigation and drainage. We also have a very vibrant multilingual technical dictionary. It has been seen early on that we are really in irrigation field, especially in the irrigation management field. We are suffering from a multitude of the definitions which are slightly different from each other and it means different to different things to different people. So we are trying to bring in a cohesive kind of definition so that when we talk to each other, we are able to talk in the same language. Capacity building and publications are something that we are working on. Disseminating the knowledge and information collected, we, we have a regular ICID news bulletins where we provide the latest information that is available <coughs> across the world. We have the e-bulletin, we have the annual reports and many other publications that we try to bring in. Recently, we had a very vibrant and very useful program in water counting with FAO and FAO and ICID could jointly come up with a with a publication which is providing a very valuable information on how to carry out water accounting, which is a very complex topic. We have a products and services directory where we provide information about various products that are available in the market, whatever services that are available in the market, and we provide this as a service for free. We do not charge anything, but for that, the countries can deploy the information and the capacities that are available across the So we have a very large kind of spectrum on which we, we try to work, but we cannot work without the active collaboration and active cooperation from the national committees and national committees form the backbone on which we survive. So we would request from the central office to all the international community that is here to support their national committees through their governments and through their, their other commercial and voluntary organizations so that those national committees are able to exploit the resources that are exposed by the ICI and carry out the work of water security in their own countries. Thank you very much. And we would now look forward to your suggestions and support. So we would we would invite the August gathering here. If anybody would like to uh, say a few words uh, on on making suggestions or or, or uh, expressing thoughts uh, on this occasion. So I don't know whether uh, uh, Mr. Singh would you you like to say a few words? Yes, sir, sure, please. Okay. Uh, very good evening to all of you. I am extremely happy to be here. I don't have a presentation. I also prefer to speak in Hindi, but uh, seeing the delegates from abroad, uh, maybe I would stick to English. First of all, let me congratulate ICID on your six months on this foundation day. The organization is almost as old as India Republic. It was done soon after India got independent. And that time we have a kind of challenge. And today when we are sitting six to nine year old, uh, the challenges may be of different kind, but challenges remain. When we got independent, the major challenge was to feed that time maybe we were calling millions of Indians, now we caught billions of Indians. 
So that was a huge challenge. Those were the days, early days when we had P P L four eighty or something. We were uh, kind of uh, getting a lot of grains from other countries to uh, uh, make to acquire meals. But then, thanks to maybe uh, some of you and your predecessor, that we got what is called a grain revolution. India became self-sufficient as far as the food is concerned, and that's very very important. Because while we can do away with not being self-sufficient in many other fields, for example, we are not self-sufficient in oil and gas. It's not a huge problem. Oil and gas are there everywhere. We can bring it from different places. I don't think if we need to meet our drinking water requirement, we meet uh, uh, we need meet the requirement of food and fiber. We are too big to be fed by anybody actually. So. But now we are at a stage where some of the solutions will be found out in the wake of uh, India's, uh, in, in the wake of getting self-sufficiency for the food, has become a problem. Sustainability is a big issue actually. For the last few days, at least our Indian friends who are sitting there must have seen a number of debates on television. Because recently, on 14th of June, we decide uh, our Niti Aayog, our the planning body. Basically, released our own minister released the book that I was there and so, which came out with some I would say maybe it pressed a panic button in some ways when it says that we are facing the worst ever crisis in the history, worst ever water crisis in the history of India. That may be true, may not be true. It's not an occasion to discuss that. It said how more than 60 crore people, which would which would mean half of the population of India. Is basically facing uh, water stress, uh, some moderate water stress, high water stress. It has to talk about many other um, data. It talked of how maybe in two years' time, 21 of our cities will go the Cape Town way, what they call now a zero day. It's a very uh, 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 popular word these days. Again, I'm not saying all this may be true, may not be true. That day also our minister said that it is not so much a, a problem of availability of water, but it's a kind of a management of water. The other day our chairman CWC was on a debate when he was saying how we have uh, 1123 BCM of surface water and ground water, some 619 plus some 433 or whatever. So 1123 BCM, he said our demand is only 750. I don't consider, I consider demand and supply, not availability and supply. Availability is a different concept. There may be 423 BCM of water may be available below the ground, but in, but but that requires for that to become really available to people for drinking water or for irrigation. You require a lot of uh, kind of investment to bring that uh, resource from where it is actually. So anyway, so it's a um, fact remains that things are not easy. As the then World Bank uh, Vice President told in 1995, I think, when he said that uh, the world war of this century is their war, they have fought for oil. The world war for next century would be fought over water. I'm not talking about world war, but at least I can find that every day there is some kind of fight over water already in India. Almost all states are at loggerheads with each other. There are perhaps fights occurring in the streets of Delhi. Every day. I'm not saying it would be basically somebody says it's a problem of not a problem of source, it's a problem of kind of a distribution, it's a problem of water management. But the fact remains that the problem is very much there. For two months, virtually I hardly did any work than attending to the courts and going to the this was to the bank registrar's office, going to the AG's office every day. Why? Because of the Kaveri problem. And even today, while I was coming here. Uh, I got three phone calls. Just now, as I was getting a phone call, I did not take it. Again, it was said that, okay, today you have notified the constitution of a Kaveri Water Management Authority, but when is the next meeting going to take place? So, today, water, I don't know, it's not just a resource. It has become such an emotional issue. It has become a, maybe somebody says that water has become a most politicized commodity in India. So, we are at a stage where again, all water professionals, maybe you are, you, are, you are looking after not every aspect of it, but then all water professionals have to think and 
decide what we need to basically do so that the so, so called doomsday which is being uh, uh, projected that doomsday actually doesn't happen actually and if again i'm saying india is too big a country right now perhaps we are number 2 in population in sure we are going to be the number 1 population so for our kind of a population i don't think anything from outside would really help us actually. so uh, so 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 i would say that maybe I, I i was seeing very carefully when you were making up mr pandya was making up this presentation that even icid how it has graduated in the sense that initially it basically uh, uh, concentrated only on technical part of it but today the sustainability which is a big issue actually uh, I, i'm happy that icid is already um, uh, looking into it and these are going to be difficult from other point of view also those are obvious why did not repeat it in the sense that the way even 10 years back i was not thinking when somebody was talking of climate change in these kind of halls we thought that maybe climate change is something which is uh, too distant away or something which is basically to be uh, uh, spoken to in in these kind of uh, air conditioned seminar halls or something today the effect of climate change is very much climate visible. change and and it's quite frightening as the same somebody said that india has rain falls current fall has been very much true perhaps our total average rain fall if i say so 20 years back or 30 years back or what you are back and now perhaps the total rain fall has been changed maybe i have a little 100 mm or something of course it varies from place to place but just look at the distribution over time and space It's, it's, it's you know very weird actually the same rainfall of 400 mm which would have happened on 20 rainy days now that 400 mm rainfall is taking over 3 rainy days now that is getting all kinds of problems that's why you have today a flood and at the same time you have a drought also at the same place so now the question is of course everybody says that we must build a lot of uh, storage and people talk of that india has no india has a very good number of Mm, uh, at times, it is not that we have been sitting idle. India, I think, the, has, has more than five thousand dams. Perhaps the third largest number of dams which we have in India. But then he says, with all kinds of problems, whether it's resettlement, rehabilitation, displacement of people from the land acquisition, forest clearance, wildlife, biodiversity, so there are so many issues. For which uh, it will be very difficult for the bigger dams to come by in India. So what do we do? They say that we have to not only think in terms of a surface storage, we have to think in terms of groundwater storage as well. And in some of the places, the groundwater storage has become a very huge problem. Somebody tells me that in Haryana, in 15 years' time, there will be no water left in the aquifer section because our rate at which we are drawing the water there is at least two and a half times more. Then the water is seeping in or penetrating it. So, so, so problems maybe the, the, the same problem which is there in Haryana and Punjab may not be the same. Um, uh, problem may not be the same elsewhere in the country. On same 14th June, there is Niti Aayog report on water management index where they kind of rank the states and idea is that maybe this it would be bring some kind of a competition between the states to be more efficient. Same day there was another. Uh, a study report was released, which was done by the Ekriar or by our minister, and they talk of that. Why do you talk all the time only in that when you talk of productivity for a crop? We always say so many tons per hectare. We never talk in terms of per uh, so many tons per meter cube of water used. Maybe, uh, 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 but for that, of course, we require a lot of policies and other kind of uh, interventions so that. Uh, a, a person thinks in terms of growing something a per meter cube of water and not per per per, per hectare of land. Actually. So anyway, there are there are a number of issues, and this is not uh, perhaps the time and we might see we talk about all of this. But all I am saying is that yes, we are again at a time when water issues are extremely important issues, and these problems are not only like it's not only that they say that in India 21 cities are going to run out of water. The Cape Town villages have been seen, perhaps in India more than perhaps any other country. So, so, so there are many other countries for which similar kind of problems have been predicted. But at the same time, I find I, I was looking at one debate when somebody told me that USA. I don't know whether they are correct figure, but somebody said 
the water consumption what was there in USA, the water consumption level is same today in USA. <coughs> so in India also every time we say no, our will get doubled by such and such year, so our mm -hmm. water requirement also will get doubled. That may not be true because if we can become more efficient users of water, like in Delhi where there is a fight every day on water, I am told that there is 40% is revenue water actually, non-revenue water. So if we can do the leakages or theft or whatever is there, if we can bring in, we can get more than 40% of water available actually. So maybe there are there, there are things which have been done elsewhere and from which we have to learn best practices, whatever they are. So ICID is a good way to learn of whatever the best practices are elsewhere and we try to replicate that or apply that in Indian conditions so that this right. so way which has been predicted doesn't uh, come true and uh, we do survive and we do have a lesson where the water may not be a big issue and hopefully uh, as, uh, as somebody feared the next world war would not be fought over water hopefully so with these words I will uh, uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to share a few words thank you very much So now I request uh, our uh, esteemed representatives of various embassies and uh, countries if anybody would like to make a short intervention. President Nerizi and uh, Vice President Yala Eddy and everyone. Good evening uh, from Italy. It is a real pleasure and uh, honor to take part for me to this ceremony for the 69th anniversary of the foundation of ICID, International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage. Uh, Italy as probably most of you know, is one of the countries, one of the funding member countries since 1951. So it is a, a real pleasure for us, for Italy, for the National Committee of Italy and for my country to be here and uh, celebrate with you this very important, very particular date. Uh, I know that uh, we have seen through the presentation of uh, Secretary General uh, Dr. Pandya and through the presentation also of President Reinders what are the great challenges that we are facing in the next future. I am sure though, they are very challenging, uh, but I am sure that uh, this community 
this organization, which is, I may say, is the leading organization, technical and scientific organization for sustainable use of water resources. I think that we are well ahead of uh, this challenge and I'm sure that we are going to be able to face it with even more uh, scientific and acknowledgement in order to cope with these very serious problems. Uh, we can, we all know what is happening is right below our eyes, right in front of us. Climatic change, water scarcity, land degradation, land salinization. So all of these issues with different actions, with different aspects all over the world are affecting uh, human beings. So I am sure though that uh, events like this, commemorations, and remembering where we started and what we are doing, where we are going to, I think can greatly contribute in enhancing the efforts and uh, the research that this community is bringing all over the world in order to face and solve the very important problems we are uh, witnessing. So my personal Greetings, my personal salute, welcome, and also on behalf of Italy to all of you who are celebrating this very important event, this very important anniversary, and uh, I hope we are all going to meet in Canada next August for our international meeting and have a nice evening, a very nice event. Goodbye, hello from Italy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, to start, so we we'll have this one cultural program. I hand over to Madhu to conduct that cultural program. Thank you. <laughs> Internet has the software has different strings. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello friends, uh, my name is Jinsi and I'm on the team, this is Sajin and so uh, we'll be presenting you some uh, Korean songs so you, can, uh, so you all can experience the uh, Korean culture a little bit, so hope you all enjoy.
regarding my guru and uh, the participants for the evening. The International Academy of Mohaniyatam is chaired by Dr. Jaya Prabhupada, a dancer with exceptional artistry, a versatile choreographer and an affectionate guru to her disciples. Jaya Prabhupada Menon has notched a reputation non-parallel in the firmament of Indian classical dancers. Her performances of Mohaniyatam have been eloquent demonstrations of the Tisorian talents grouped by venerated gurus like Kalamandalam Saraswati, C. V. Chandrasekhar, and Paradi Shivaji. Jayaprabha's graceful vritta is phenomenal as one can discern the union of the dance and the dancer into a single entity. Her metamorphosis into the vivid characters on the stage speaks for her histrionic adroitness. Myriad are the choreographies that embrace both Quranic and contemporary motives and further, they are quintessential of her insatiable urge to establish the intrinsic identity of the dance form peculiar to Kerala. Also, they are the end results of her perennial search for the roots of the dance form. In this endeavor, she has been fortunate to enjoy the guidance of Padma Bhushan Kavalam Narayana Padikar, an acclaimed authority of Sopana Sangeetam. Apart from being a senior performer of Mohiniyatam, Jaiprabha Menon is a well-known choreographer and a teacher. A registered organization, International Academy of Mohiniyatam, is her independent and innovative space for art. She is regularly organizing festivals, workshops, and seminars for the propagation, preservation, and promotion of Mohiniyatam and other Indian classical art forms. Under the banner of this institution, 
she teaches classical dances for over 100 dedicated students in different centers in the city of New Delhi. IAM is soon starting an art initiative of a unique school program designed for schools across the country to create awareness about the Indian classical art tradition. Now uh, about the participants for today evening, myself, Rogini Sagish Padwal, a senior disciple of Guru Jayaprabha Menon, she has an association with her guru and the International Academy of Mohiniyatam for the last 14 years. At an early age, she underwent training in hailing from training in Bharatanatyam under the guidance of Sri Radha Mohan. Hailing from a family of artists, passion for dancing came naturally to her. A graduate in English literature from Delhi University, she has performed extensively in and outside the country with her guru. She has been a part of many prestigious choreographic presentations of her group. Working at a private firm in Delhi, Rohini is married to Sadish Bodhwar, an eminent Erekya player, and is blessed with two sons. Uh, now we have Arpita Nayar, a graduate in philosophy. Arpita is a CCRT scholar who began her journey in the field of dance at the age of four. She has been under the tutelage of Kalashri Srimati Jayaprabha Menon for the last 14 years. She has widely performed in India and abroad, choreographed for different events and been an assistant to her guru in her projects. Revati Nayar, a senior diploma holder in Bharatanatyam with first division from Bangia Sangeet Parishad, is a professional dancer and choreographer. She has over 20 years of education in Bharatanatyam and 12 years in Mohiniyatam under the tutelage of Guru Kalashri Kalamandalam Radha Mara and Guru Kalashri Jayaprabha Menon. Revati holds experience in performing at various esteemed dance festivals in India and international touring for various cultural dance and art festivals as a performer and choreography assistant. Today we present to you Cheru Matta. A Malayalam translation of the Angikam Bhuganam Shloka, Cherumatam describes Lord Shiva, the body of the Lord which becomes the universe, each and every sound heard becomes his speech and the celestial bodies becoming his adornments. O Lord Shiva, we bow to you. The lyrics of this wow. item has been penned by Kavalam Narayana Padikar, wow. music by Kavalam Padmanathan and choreography by Dr. Guru Jayaprabha Menon. We present to you Chiram Mandal. <laughs>
to pose a vote of sign classical music mein bhi hai classical music thank you uh ladies and gentlemen uh, i'll be honest with you it's not for me to be here uh, expressing thanks especially when people are waiting for their dinner but uh, that's the case right now uh, i'll try to finish in less than 5 minutes and uh, let you have more time with the dinner uh, first and foremost uh, we are not 69 years old we are 16 years old with 53 years of experience uh, with the experience on the arm of icid uh, i'd like to thank the foreign dignitaries the honorable ambassadors high commissioners and in some cases uh, the representatives from the embassy and international partners such as ardo uh, imi and world bank for gracing the occasion and blessing icid in its endeavor towards global food security through irrigation and drainage uh, as you saw in the secretary general's presentation icid is basically made of national committees around the world and many of them virtually joined together on the occasion today and special thanks to all of them thanks are also due to all vips uh, you are all vips today for me uh, especially mr up singh secretary what resources uh, mr s hussain chairman central water commission senior officials from ministry of resources cwc wtc and iri to all young and old scientists and professionals and experts who spent their valuable time this evening with us interacting with fellow professionals thanks are also due to all the artists in the front that is mr jinsi and mr sajid from korea cultural center the indian classical dance you just witnessed this is roini satish and her team of students of guru dr jayaprabha menon from the international academy of munia and all the support in the back for presenting a wonderful short culture program keeping the guests in the flow and last but not the least my colleagues in icid uh, president felix renders from south africa uh, vice president yel arvedi from hyderabad secretary general mr ashwin palya executive director mr harish verma dr sadev singh and all the fellow associates who have been working very hard on last few weeks in making this function a memorable evening i hope you enjoyed the evening please join the delicious dinner that is waiting for you outside please <laughs> before going for the dinner we we'll just to present to a token gift to our uh, uh, friends who have presented